you are not in tutorial hell you are in i can't code hell there's a difference if you seriously want to get better at programming and finally leave tutorial hell this one simple trick is what i did to start actually creating meaningful projects and finally leave this phenomenon of tutorial hell first off you need to realize you're not in tutorial hell you're in i can't code hell this is when you're trying to memorize your syntax and literally everything there is to know about your machine you think that you're supposed to somehow memorize every pixel of code and know what everything is doing exactly in the back end that you're somehow supposed to know how to implement anything and everything straight from a tutorial and this might leave you with the feeling that if you don't know exactly what to put in your ide at all times when coding a coding project without using google stack overflow chat gpt that you don't know enough and you need to go watch more coding tutorials and i guess that's where they get the term tutorial hell from but in reality, I wouldn't call it tutorial hell. I would call it I can't code hell because you just feel like you don't know enough to start coding actual projects, which is reasonable because the truth is nobody does. Well, of course, there are those anomalies who are very intelligent and can, but the vast majority of people can't. Matter of fact, the vast majority of people uses the internet as a tool because we have the internet. Mathematicians use calculators because they have calculators. So why can't we as software engineers use the internet since we have the internet? Too many software engineering students believe believe that if they don't know everything and memorize everything that they're not good enough and it leads them down this very toxic and imposter syndrome mindset where they feel like they're just not good enough and they will never be able to be good enough to be in this kind of field and to be honest i wouldn't be surprised if software engineering is the number one most imposter syndrome career now by the way don't get me mistaken what i'm saying isn't that it's okay to fake everything and not know how anything works there are actually quite a few things that you should know how they work for example if statements loops data structures memory management big o notation how to traverse an array what is an array vectors etc things like these you should know what these different type of tools are how they work and how to properly utilize them. these are things that you should have a lot of knowledge about because when you are in an interview these are things that the interviewer is going to ask you about but there's one thing i can promise you they are not going to ask you they're not going to say okay Create me a calculator application without using the internet right now. It's just something completely unrealistic. And they understand that we're humans and not machines. Anyways, when you're a beginner and you're creating coding projects from scratch, you are going to have to use the internet. There is literally no going around it. For every single developer, whether from beginner to elite, this is how it goes when prompted with a new coding challenge or project. They hear about the project and say, oh, I never did this. I don't think I could do something like this. Then they finally get their hands on the project and say, yeah, I totally can't do this. This is the point where many computer science majors and many beginner engineers get stuck on and they end up never progressing because in their head they start to think okay i don't know enough i need to go watch more tutorials how do i know this exactly well because i was there less than a year ago then the next stage that they get to is oh snap i might be able to do this and then they finally finish the project and they're like wow i can't believe i just created this and then the cycle repeats over and over again every single time they're prompted with something new so jamil how exactly do i get over the i can't code part just like when you're trying to learn how to swim you have to just jump into the deep end literally just jump Jump into a coding project, open up ChatGPT, Stack Overflow, Google, even Geeks for Geeks if that's what you're into, and just hash at it. Sit there for a few hours a day if you have to, but just don't watch another coding tutorial. Don't try to make your way through another five hour JavaScript course that's probably never going to get finished. Just hash at it using ChatGPT as your mentor, asking it important questions to guide. That way you're learning through actually getting your hands on some real life coding projects that are unique to you. And this is what people call project based learning, which is in my opinion the only way to actually learn how to code all these tutorials do is leave you with wanting more information and with the feeling of i can't code which you probably can't yet but you have to be willing to start coding something even if you have no clue what you're doing a lot of the people who got really good at this coding stuff started because they needed something built with software either for video games or for, to make their life easier they didn't have the money to pay someone else to do it so they had to learn how to do it themselves and now they're probably very successful and here's something really important to keep in mind you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you're starting out with your coding projects a lot of beginner coders think that if their project isn't completely groundbreaking it doesn't count as real coding but that's that's just not true. The goal isn't to come up with the next billion dollar app. I mean, it could be in the future, but right now it's not. The goal is to practice problem solving and building up your confidence. So here's what you can do. You can start small and start by building a simplified version of something you use every day. For example, if you're into sports, you can create some type of application that pulls sports data. If you're into music, some type of music platform. Games, try starting with something simple. I really like Snake. As you do these projects, take the time to ask important questions such as, why does this 
function behave this way? Or what happens if I change this variable? Or how does this part of the code interact with the rest? Every question you ask and every problem you solve brings you closer to understanding how coding works. And honestly, that's the only way to get better. Not by watching another tutorial, but just learning as you go. Here's a pro tip, document your journey. Write down what you're learning as you go or share it online or try to explain it to friends because the best way to learn something is actually by teaching it. Anyways, the mindset shift from I need to memorize everything to I'm here to solve problems and learn is what separates the people from I can't code help to the people who go on to build some incredible things. Because here's the truth. Coding is more about problem solving than memorizing syntax. The syntax is just the tool. Your ability to think through a problem and break it down step by step is what makes you an engineer. Anyways, what's the big takeaway from this video? It's that the only way you are going to get better at coding is when you stop telling yourself that you can't code. Words are way more powerful than you think. Anything that you say, your subconscious hears it over and over. So if you take anything from this video, it's to jump into a coding project, even if you have no clue what you're doing and just learn on the way. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, and comment a coding project that you want to work on. I'd like to hear about some of your guys' creative coding ideas. I'll be replying to all the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one.